So all of our high contact surface areas will be sanitized twice per day. Um, this is one of the reasons why at Valley View um, students are not going to have lockers uh, because that would become a high contact surface area and kids only have two blocks and so my thinking is you know you can probably manage keeping your personal items in a backpack and carrying them with you that shouldn't be a hardship uh, but having kids going to their lockers would put extra hardship I believe on just trying to make sure that all those areas are cleaned regularly twice per day so that's one thing that we're putting in place uh, it will also help um, with the traffic flow kids won't be going to their locker to get personal items they'll have them right there with them Valley View is probably not unlike most other schools. We're looking at multiple breaks, so staggered breaks. So kids won't be out all at once. We're going to chunk those. Um, and we're going to be looking at encouraging kids to be outside an awful lot. It's really healthy for them to be outside and it will reduce the amount of kids that are in the hallways. Um, but in a large school like Valley View, I mean, kids are going to have to use the washrooms. They're going to have to move around a little bit to go and uh, see a counselor or connect with somebody. Um, and so we're saying to them, uh, if you cannot socially distance, and you probably can't in the hallways and common areas, we're going to ask that you use a mask. So mine is quite fashionable, <laughs> and I'm sure our kids... Um, will come up with all sorts of creative ideas on what they want, you know, Batman and that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, that's the reality. We, we have to move through our spaces, just like Walmart. We have to move through our spaces safely, and this is gonna help us get there. I actually don't mind mine. So their health and safety training will go through all of that on the first day. Um, the expectation is that when they come into the building, they wash their hands and before they leave, they wash their hands and throughout the day, they're washing their hands. So um, staggered breaks will help with that. And we've also put maximum capacity numbers on our washroom doors, just so that we won't have a, a, a large group of kids gathering in there. So if um, a child or a staff member for that matter becomes symptomatic while at school. Um, the protocol that we've put in place is that they need to put a mask on right away um, and then they will come up here. This is our medical space mm -hmm. um, and we will isolate them in uh, the medical space. Uh, parents will be contacted right away okay. um, and asked to come and pick up uh, their child. Uh, the next step will be to contact 811 um, and the health authority on the other end of that 811 call will guide the parent through next steps. So and um, probably what, what they will be asked to do is go in for a test and those test results are coming back very quickly actually and so the child would stay at home until um, we hear back from the 811 uh, health uh, authority and then quite possibly come back to school uh, when they're not symptomatic. Our HVAC system uh, has been um, upgraded just a few years ago uh, and there's constant maintenance. We have people looking at the system all of the time. Uh, you know I'm not an expert in that area but I do know they come in and adjust the dampers all the time for the airflow coming into different spaces in the school. So I have complete confidence in our HVAC system. I think it's probably uh, better looked after than my own home is. This is just a piece of the general maintenance that happens on a regular, constant basis with any kind of system that we have within the school. So there's a number of things that we're doing to keep kids and staff safe. Uh, for instance, in a high school, kids need access to their counselors. Uh, for program changes, for emotional support, um, those are their go-to people. Uh, in a busy school, um, we want to make sure that we can do that safely. Our counselors are going to try and meet with kids in a variety of different ways. So those that need that face-to-face -face connection will still be able to do so safely with the use of their masks. But for kids that have regular questions just about programming, 
um, our counselors are looking at connecting with them in different ways. So by phone conversation, I mean it's something that seems very different, but it's actually quite effective. It saves time and kids are heard immediately. So, and it also clears this area. So even though we have a number of kids that may need to meet with their counselors, and I know they will, they'll be able to have that access right away. As an educator and having done this job for a long time, I'm very excited about having kids back in the school. Um, I think the uh, social emotional opportunities for our kids are so incredibly important and there's research out there that says the longer they're away from school, the more long lasting that detrimental effect will be. There's tons of research out there. So getting our kids back in school, having them connected with a peer group that is controlled through learning groups is absolutely critical. So from an educator point of view, I couldn't be more excited. Now, looking at all of the work that we've had to put in to reschedule the school, to make sure that we've put in all of the protocol and safety cleaning and all of that stuff, um, to me, uh, I see that everywhere. This isn't just in school. I see it absolutely everywhere. You want to go and get on the plane and go somewhere. You want to go and buy a loaf of bread. Um, it, it, it's not that um, what we're doing here is uh, any more different. As a matter of fact, we have more controls. You go into um, a grocery store, you don't go in through a controlled group. They limit the numbers, but you don't have a controlled group. So in schools, we can put in more measures to be able to really see who our kids are interacting with. We can keep track of them much, much better. I feel very confident that our kids are safe. Um, and uh, you know what, I trust implicitly the information that's coming from public health. Um, they have a much broader lens than we do uh, as individuals. I mean, I, I you know, watch the news just like everybody else does, uh, but um, Dr. Bonnie Henry has really led this province well, and so I have a lot of faith in what she says will work for us to get kids back into school. We're gonna do so safely. We're gonna do so responsibly. We're going to tweak and do what we need to do along the way, uh, but this is absolutely um, the right thing to do for our society, absolutely.